All right. Welcome. So, Timmy Boy, Timmy Pool Boy, the the be the best of the, all pool boys. He's the pool boy I would hire for my pornographic <laughs> uses. <laughs> uh, McCarthy loses seventh vote. Gates votes for Trump as speaker in epic fail for GOP establishment. Okay. So now we know the GOP establishment won, right? They won. Okay. So whatever he's going to say in here, we have hindsight to. And it's super funny because he was one of the guys that predicted a Trump landslide against Biden. He predicted a Trump landslide against Clinton. And that was like a nail biting close race where Trump still lost the popular vote, right? He, he predicted a landslide in the 2022 midterms when the red wave didn't happen. They took a couple seats in the house and then we, we maintained everything else. So yeah, it's his predictions are uh, not good <laughs> most of the time. So we'll see what he has to say to the seventh official House Speaker vote. If five Republicans vote for Byron Donalds, McCarthy will lose for a seventh time. So sure smash will. that like and button, he, subscribe he to this channel, share this show with your friends. Become a member at TimCast.com to support our work. No. One of the biggest concerns I'm good. that the Republicans had is that Kevin McCarthy's super PAC would be going up against MAGA candidates in open primaries. And if they're willing to back off, some people are willing to support Kevin McCarthy. But this is... Does anyone else notice, like, the notable contradiction in that? Like, if and only if you're willing to give us more power, or if and only if you're, uh, you're able to, like, give us, I guess, yeah, give us more power, make sure that we're able to get in the vote, we'll give you the ability to give us more power. Because that's what they wanted. They wanted to be on all the judiciary committees, or on the uh, House Rules Committees, right? So, like... They're asking for him to step off and then they'll step on the gas. Like that's not a, that that's not a compromise. The Republican civil war. Ah, I said it, oh. but not like full scale conflict. This is the MAGA party standing strong and saying no, despite the fact that Donald Trump is getting behind Kevin McCarthy. Many of these people, the Freedom Caucus, not necessarily the MAGA guys, but the Freedom Caucus guys, Gates and Boebert are saying MAGA no. guys. We I think that's smart on Tim Pool's position. I think Tim's getting a little bit smarter over time because in this case, what he did is he, he kind of separated them, right? This is probably like the long line of secession where he's slowly trying to separate the Freedom Caucus and MAGA from each other to see which one comes out, you know, whether the whole MAGA movement, if Trump goes to prison or whatever, you know, stuff like that. And then he can back one or the other, kind of like with the Tea Party stuff where all of the Tea Party people turned into MAGA people. So you could be like, well, not necessarily MAGA, you know, Tea Party guys or whatever. And then when the Tea Party, do, you know, goes away, you can be like, they're MAGA guys. He will not support Hedging McCarthy, despite the fact he has made concessions. It would seem that people like Matt Gates are just saying you've you've spit in the face of compromise. How? So that's it. You will never get our votes. And Wait, wait, wait. How have they spit in, in the face? Like, this is what I mean. So I'm giving my personal takes on things, right? And so is Tim Pool. We are pundits. We are not reporters or whatever. You know, Tim Pool is not a journalist. I am not a journalist. We are pundits, essentially, right? Uh, he just makes a shitload more money than I do. So what Tim is saying here is that the reason they're spitting back in the face the reason matt gates is saying no and he wants trump to be the speaker of the house for some reason uh <laughs> special uh the reason that's happening is because the establishment republicans have spit in the face of compromise despite the fact that the maga republicans are the ones that have been voting no on every democrat proposed bill and only the establishment types have been willing to reach across the aisle for things like infrastructure. So how is it that they're the ones unwilling to compromise when Matt Gates and others, right, this Freedom Caucus type, are currently not willing to compromise on putting someone in between them and the Democrats in the speakership role? They're the ones not compromising. 
So again, I'm not saying Matt Gates has said that, although Matt Gates might have because he's dumb as a rock. Uh, but Tim Pool has said that. Tim is saying that the reason is because they're not willing to compromise, right? The establishment Republicans aren't willing to, to compromise, but that's the issue. They're the only ones willing to compromise, and they have been on a lot of things, right? That and, of course, establishment Democrats. But still, like, as compromise goes, they're the ones doing the compromising. So it's just, like, a blatantly false way to look at things. And we just saw a strong endorsement for Byron Donalds. We are now going down... <laughs> <laughs> strong endorsement four votes yeah strong endorsement for byron donald the line if we see five votes for donald's kevin mccarthy will have lost the seventh vote i don't know if we're going to get there just yet but we will see you can count on gates and bobert for at least two i'd imagine byron donald's himself is going to probably uh, vote yeah, i'm pretty sure himself did. And Biggs just cast a ballot for Donalds. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to History in the Making. I hope you've been uh, enjoying. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll come out and say it. It is, it is a lot less entertaining, in my opinion, the way this is structured. If you're watching live, it's substantially more entertaining. If you're not watching live, it's substantially less entertaining. And uh, because you'll have gotten a lot of this news already, I already see someone chatting that uh, one, of the, one of the things that sucks about watching live is you can't fast forward to see what ended up happening. <laughs> <laughs> Donald's now has two votes. Whoa. Lauren Boebert standing up, voting for Donald's for his third vote. Add on Gates, you got four. Ladies and gentlemen. Dude, he's so excited about Congress obstructionism. It's, it's beautiful. I love it. He's like, I don't want anything passed. And if you vote to make sure no bills get passed, then I'm with you. I hate legislation. I hate functioning government. I hate it. <laughs> Oh, man, what a guy. It looks like Kevin McCarthy is about to make a historic failure once again. Yeah, and if oh, we yeah. move to an eighth vote, it will be worse than 1923. The establishment is reeling. And you know what? So be it. As we await this roll call vote, which will probably take about like what a half an hour to an hour. Let's see what you guys have to say. And all everyone right. gets watching Kevin McCarthy lose. I want you to all remember. Wait, all we need was what? five. I Let's will take see. that over. Uh, Ewart says, if he wins, it would be like having a lukewarm Democrat anyway. I would rather it all topple and the Dems win, because at least then we know how they are screwing us. <laughs> Bro, okay, all right. Yeah, M McCarthy, the... <laughs> the let's build the, the border and fight the Chinese... Communist Party guy. Yeah, that guy's a moderate Democrat. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's more like having a Democrat in fucking a dude. Maybe it's just me, but like, holy fuck. We can't even have a conversation about like wages or, you know, health care. It's always got to be some dumb shit like this. I thought about this. It's an important thing to consider. What if the Democrats do win? I think that would be apocalyptic. I'm actually scared when they. You know, if the Democrats win, black people and white people can get married. Gay people can get married. The world will come to an end. It's over. Healthcare can be affordable again. It's over. We're done. We're done for. Like, what do you mean? Apocalyptic. Like, I personally think that the Republican Party in the U.S. is one of the biggest terror organizations in all of humanity, right? The, the most well-funded terror organization in all of history, okay? That's my personal opinion. And when they won in 2022, at least in the House, I didn't talk about how it was going to be apocalyptic. I didn't use wording like that. And it's because I don't have to use fear to get a base, right? Granted, I guess I don't have a base. Maybe maybe he's on to something. Maybe I should start talking like that. Be like, listen, listen, if uh if if Matt Gates gets to leave outside of his house today, the whole world collapses. Atlas will shrug. Atlas will shrug. Jesus. Alright.
They said there was no quorum. When Elise Stefanik said no quorum, they said there's 311 members. If they don't, if the Republicans don't actually show up, I don't know. There it is. With Cloud, Donalds gets the fifth vote. Kevin McCarthy has lost. There it is. Look at how excited he is. Like I said, he's so happy that Congress is obstructed, that we're just paying them to sit around and do nothing. He's so happy to make sure you hardworking citizens of this country are giving them taxes so they can do absolutely nothing but sit and vote on a meaningless horseshit vote. It is tweeted out, ladies and gentlemen, post to Facebook, share the feed. Really do appreciate your support. There it is. Clyde voting for Donald's. Wow. Six already. Let's get it. So I don't know exactly how this will play out. My fear is that if not enough members are present, Republicans don't show up. The majority of the votes cast will be for Jeffries. It was pretty close. I think of it two ways. If McCarthy wins, did you really get anything? I mean, Liz Cheney nominates this guy. He calls Trump a Putin puppet. I know you've heard me say it a million times, but here we are on day three of having to explain why it is people like me, people like Gates and Bobert are saying no to Kevin McCarthy. He's an establishment shell. He's an establishment shell. <laughs> Dude's not extreme enough. He's not calling for like the lynching of black people and Democrats. So, you know. <laughs> it's wild to me, dude. He hasn't done anything anything that conservatives should be upset with aside from saying trump's not a good president and wowzers that's not a hard thing to prove hell now i can't speak for gates and bobert for for biggs for clyde for cloud for for the freedom caucus for self uh what i can say is for me personally i do not care for the machine it ain't gonna happen <laughs> i only care for the system when the system works for me Dude, I think the issue here is more than anything that he's just so like counterculture that his brain has fallen out. And like he thinks that being Republican is like now the cool counterculture because people realize that racism isn't cool anymore, you know? So now that's the cool counterculture. You know what I mean? Like that's it. And it, you know, the, the beanie has squeezed the brain out. So all that's left is like this radical hatred of like mainstream pop culture right and that's it like there's no analysis on whether there's anything valuable in mainstream pop culture it's just like i i hate it and therefore i oppose it regardless of what it is like i feel like if republicans were leading he'd be wearing like the bernie beanie and shit you know like with me he'd be like i don't understand why it is that these establishment democrats aren't willing to vote for bernie you should be withholding it it's, it's bernie or bust baby that would that would be tim pool in a world where uh, Republicans consistently won every single election. Byron Donalds, I'll give him a shot. Why? Because as we just heard in the endorsement before we started this segment, something different. There's Crane voting for Donalds. I think, I think we're, I, I, this is bad. I think, bad for McCarthy. I think we are going to see, oh, there's Crenshaw. McCarthy. I think we're going to see 23, 24 votes for Donalds, maybe more. <laughs> oh man again watching this like with hindsight is funny but we need some change whatever that change may be if it's donald's if it's jordan it's whatever i'm just saying no to kevin mccarthy no That's it. not jordan come on dude this see this is what i mean he literally said it it's change it's just change there's no principle there's no in intellect behind it there's no anything right like there's nothing behind it at all and and he's like, well, as long as it's different, it's good. Jesus. Thank you. It is it is hard work at being out here memeing. I appreciate all the uh, the encouragement. Listening to Tim Pool drains my ability to continue existing. My will to live is slowly being sapped. <laughs> but for real, like he just said, like, no, I'm counterculture and that's it. Like. Jordan, like I said earlier, Jim Jordan is complicit in helping to cover potential, allegedly, okay, covering my legal stuff here, all right, allegedly, Jim Jordan is complicit in covering up child sex abuse. That's the guy that he just said, I don't care. I prefer him over fucking McCarthy. Why? Because McCarthy is part of the mainstream. We need a change. He was here last year. I don't like that. 
I want a new guy. Ridiculous, dude. Jim Jordan has been fighting See? a lot Jim for a lot Jordan. of things that we care about. Censorship. Has he done a good job of it? Well, that's up for you to for you for uh, that's for you to decide. I would say a lot of what he's done has been quite ineffective, but I'd like to see it happening. So you know what? I will take that over McCarthy. Byron. See what I mean? Doesn't give a shit. No principles. Donalds. I don't know a lot about him, to be completely honest, but I will take anything over McCarthy. Anything. Anything over McCarthy. I doubt that. I very much doubt that. I guarantee you right now, if Mao was in the crowd, he wouldn't be like, yeah, I'll take Mao. I prefer Castro. There's no way. Right? Like, you can't be that counterculture. Right? Like, Hitler's in the crowd somewhere, and he's like, yeah, I prefer that guy. That guy right there? That dude that's talking about eugenics or whatever? At least he's not part of the machine. Fuck, dude. That's just it. That's why I'm kind of like, look, man. If Donald's really Look, was man. just another GOP guy, just another part of the machine, that's why I think he should win. I am saying enough of the old guard, bring in something new, whatever form that may take. So whatever form it may take, this is what I mean, right? So like for me personally, when I say something like, let's get rid of the old guard, bring in the new guard, it's because the new guard is more in touch with what's actually happening, right? Like, Take something like even Bernie is part of the old guard. Why don't we get someone that agrees with him that's younger to take over, that's more in touch with what's happening right now in the country, and then see what their policies say. And if that new guard is worthy of it, yeah, let's get rid of the old guard. I'm so pro term limits because, you know, that gets rid of this whole counterculture thing. Like you can't, you can't justify opinions that are this dumb because... Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're going to be out in a couple of weeks or whatever. You know, they've got 12 years and then they're gone. There's no such thing as an establishment anymore. It's just people that vote a certain way or another way. And that's it. So I don't get it, man. Whatever change it, whatever form it may take, I just want change. That's the end of it. Real dumb. Real dumb, Tim. Love you. But you're real dumb. So if that's Kevin McCarthy then I, I say no. If that's Donald's, I say yes. And if they are very similar, so what? New blood, new changes. But I got to be honest. <laughs> oh. Could you imagine, dude? Like, uh, I'm really tired of eating salami sandwiches prepared by my wife. I'm gonna eat a salami sandwich prepared by me. Well, are, do you make them different? No, they're just better because they're new and different. The fuck is different about them if they're made the same? Uh, I don't care if they vote the same, if they have the same principles, values, ideas, they do everything exactly the same. The point is, there's someone different now. Like, that's what he just said, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not like making this shit up, am I, right? Like, this is, this is what this man just said. I'm not the crazy one here, am I? Th like, there's no way. <laughs> this is unreal. There's a, when, when you see Gates supporting Donald's, you see Gates standing up the machine. You see how the machine tried to take Gates down. It's more. The machine didn't try to take Gates down. Gates admitted to sex trafficking on live TV. Like, we're still investigating it, but he admitted to, like, paying women for sex. <laughs> like, he admitted to that. Did, am I wrong? Didn't he do that? Wasn't there, like, a big scandal? With Tucker Carlson? Like, there's no the system trying to bring him down unless the system is, like, being against sex trafficking or whatever. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess, like, laws are technically part of the system, right? Like, uh, not murdering people is be <laughs> being part of the system. Fucking wild. More trustworthy, in my opinion. I'll tell you, I don't trust politicians for the most part. There's only a small handful. But at this point, I'll take anybody. And what people have been saying. Take me. Vote for me, Tim. 
I'm going to run. I don't know where you live. Probably fucking California or actually, you know, given how Republicans work, he probably lives in fucking Florida or Texas. It's Florida or Texas. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I, why, don't, why don't I move there and you can vote for me? You can get a whole caucus around me because I'm someone different. When I talk about redistributing the means of production, you'll agree with me, right? Because it's different. It's different, right? Come on. It's not part of the system. It's different. Saying is that Donald's voted against these spending bills, these big budget bills. Good enough for me. I'll take it. <laughs> part of it's emotional. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I've gone through the voting record of any of these guys. That's not the point. The point is there is a deep cathartic release that everyone gets watching Kevin McCarthy lose. I want you to all remember back in 2016 <laughs> when he said Trump was funded by Putin. Do you uh, yeah, I do remember that. It's one of the smartest things the man's ever said. Do you have any idea what that put this country through? Now, I'm not gonna literally nothing, actually. Wild enough, like literally nothing. And in fact, he was right because whether Republicans want to admit it or not, there were 34 convictions through the Russia Russia Gate investigations. 34 convictions, including Roger Stone and George Papadopoulos, who personally were running the Trump campaign. So, like, yeah, Trump's administration was being funded by Putin. Yes. Like, yes. That's not even my opinion. That's the opinion of the courts. I'm not going to say that McCarthy is the guy who led the charge on all of it, but he certainly helped Democrats. Because he's uniparty establishment. That's what he is. There it is. C-SPAN formally announcing Rep McCarthy does not have the votes. Eighth speaker vote expected. With 10,000 votes in on the YouTube Oof. live poll, 97% say no. Vox Populi, Vox Day, my friends. Wow. 90? Wow, wow dude. That many people just don't want, in Tim's audience, just don't want McCarthy and they don't want McCarthy probably for the same dumbass reasons Tim doesn't, which is that he's too, your, your brain doesn't work. They can't read. And that's the end of it. Like that's the end of their reasons. You know, that's it. Whew. It's fucking wild out here, man. It is wildin'. I'm having a good time. I can I'm tell loving doing the live streams. I like that. We're up. Uh, uh we, we're, we're live on, on, on Facebook or whatever. Next to Matt, uh, to Matt Gates. Oh, you know what I like? I don't think it's letting me jump back. McCarthy. Frost. Jeffries. Jeffries. You know what's funny? I don't know if you noticed Fry. this, but the closed captions are faster than the actual live feed. McCarthy. Probably because the live feed's delayed and the captions aren't, but we'll That's see how true. things go. McCarthy. Someone asks, who are the three percenters Gates. with 11,500 votes? There it is. Donald Trump. He said it in on the poll 97 percent said no william fur says you think Gallagher. kevin negotiated Trump. with democrats before McCarthy. the freedom caucus yes Gallego. let's see if he oh whoa there we've got another Jeffries. vote he missed who it. Was that it was Trump. someone voted for someone else who look it? at her fucking dumb uh, oh my god dude <laughs> good one donald trump is a good vote <laughs> Donald Trump, good vote. Good president, Don Trump. Fucking dumbass. Garbarino. <laughs> Smart, dude. We're only making sure that five to 700,000 homeless people still exist in this country. We love it. Yeah. Oh, it's a good. You got the left. <laughs> Gotta love it. 300,000 homeless veterans. <laughs> Got him. Was that Gates? Yeah. Gates. Donald Trump. Let's jump back. Mike and, Garcia. And we'll try and check who that was. I'm excited for McCarthy. him to. Can we I want to see this. Let me jump back. Jeffries. Jeffries. Oh, Garcia, it's only these are seconds. Oh, wow. Jeffries. Gallagher. Oh, my Trump. God, dude. Gallagher. <laughs> McCarthy. Was that Gates voting for Trump? McCarthy. Gates voted Golden for Trump, ladies and gentlemen. We'll put that one in the headline. <laughs> Jeffries. Oh Golden man, I love York. this timeline. I gotta, Jeffries. I gotta, I gotta donate Oof. to Matt Gates. <laughs> oh 
Oh wow. That's it. That's all it takes. Dude, I fuck kids. <laughs> Fucking Matt Gates, uh the girl I paid for sex might have been 17 and I moved her across state lines maybe, which is literally illegal. That might have happened, but you know what? I said Donald Trump. I said Donnie Trump boy, President Don Don John President boy is who I vote for speaker house. And Tim Pool's like, "Yes. Yes, he good. I give money. I give money. He's smart." <laughs> Dude, it, like you can't you can't make fun of it. Like, there's no parody. Like, you can't satire this, you know? It, it's so wild. Wayne Smith, can you get Mar uh, asks, can you get Marjorie Taylor Greene on IRL tonight, even Gomez. if it's Zoom? I don't know, man. Because we go live at 8. I would, and I'm immediately like, I like these people. I have talked to politicians Pardon. before. I have talked to Democrats. No, I have sorry. had other politicians on the show, and I've said, I don't like these Donald's. people. I have spoken to a Democrat once. I didn't like it. Anyway, I like Matt Gates, Lauren Boebert, Jewish space lasers, you know? Those are good. Oh, that was that was Marjorie Green, wasn't it? Yeah. Marjorie Taylor Green, you know? I, Jewish space lasers cause California wildfires. That's I like her. She's smart. <laughs> because they they don't talk to you. You'll you'll ask them a question like, "Hey, we really want accountability in this area for this reason or that or otherwise." And yeah. Tim is a, sh did someone call me a, sh a shill for shouting out coffee brand coffee? It literally is coffee brand coffee. It doesn't mean an idea they had separate to that is a bad idea. And I said, bravo, you know, you're completely right. Wait, wait. Just because someone is violent doesn't discredit something else they do. That's what you need to understand. I think the dude was obviously a bad guy. But listen. Who? All right, I'm I'm curious. All right, who's up next? Who's up next? I we're thought we were just going to skip through this video, but they're talking about doing violence, so... Another vote for Jeffries. Another vote for Jeffries. Let's get it. All right, come on. Who sent bombs to people, and that's the problem. The bomber. The Unabomber. Cassandra McDonald. Uh, I don't know a whole lot. I know that there, there's been a lot of conversations about how the Unabomber made interesting points that people agree with, but he was a lunatic who sent bombs to people, and that's the problem. Just because someone is violent doesn't discredit something else they do. That's what you need to understand. I think the dude was obviously a bad guy. But listen, the saying goes, even Hitler liked dogs. We don't be like, he liked dogs? Well, then all dogs are bad. No, of course not. Bad people can, can, can do normal things or have ideas you agree with. Stick sex and hammer. Stick... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man i'm so glad i watched him he, he makes me laugh so much i bet my jaw is just hella strong i bet francis and ganu wouldn't even be able to knock me out with how much he fucking exercises my jaw making me fucking laugh oh my god dude wowzer sticks hex and hammer what a what a smart fucking dude. Tim Pool's like, I'm a very serious political uh, pundit here. We are talking about very serious political things. We are watching the House, the, the Congress floor, take a vote. And, you know, the Unabomber did a lot of bad things. And I think it's important that we recognize via the YouTube channel of the well-prominent intelligent individual Sticks, X, and Hammer. Oh my god, dude. S fucking sticks, axe, and hammer. What the fuck? Sticks, axe, and hammer. Just so you guys, you guys get, if you don't know who sticks, axe, and hammer is. <laughs> This right here, all right? This gentleman is Sticks Hex and Hammer, all right? He's like <laughs> classic fucking red pilled redditor type, you know? He was the the meninist guy. This this is Sticks Hex and Hammer. Very serious capable individual. Very manly masculine guy. 
<laughs> yeah. Stick Sax and Hammer had a lot of smart things to say. Sorry, I, I can't get over that. Uh, b besides, wasn't the Unabomber like an accelerationist communist? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm like 99% that his politics were like accelerationist communism. He was like, uh, like an anprim, you know, he was an anarcho primitivist. So he thought that what we needed to do is like destroy the system and live in the wilderness together in communes. Kaczynski abandoned his academic career to pursue a primitive life, moving to a remote cabin without electricity or running water. Yep. Being self-sufficient. Argued his bombings were extreme but necessary in attracting attention to the erosion of human freedom and dignity by modern technologies that require mass organization. So yeah, his... Like, his whole... He went to Harvard and, like learned about Marx and shit like that, and then developed afterwards that he, uh, like, that he wanted to live in, out in the world by himself. He was, like, a mathematician guy, right? Looking. The bombings, yep, 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 uh-huh. The manifesto. He said he would desist from terrorism if his demand were met. There were controversy about the essay, whether it should be published, but they did. I hope that the reader could identify the author, and it was like his brother or something, if I remember correctly. Uh, summary. Industry, society, and its future begins with Kaczynski's insertion that the Industrial Revolutions and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. It writes that technology has had a destabilizing effect on society, has made life unfulfilling, and has caused widespread psychological suffering. Kaczynski argues that most people spend their lives engaged in pursuits because of technological advances. He calls them surrogate activities, right? So, like, yeah. This dude... That he's like, yeah, this is this guy's smart. This guy's smart. He's saying a lot of smart things, you know, like real smart things. Uh, he was like an anarcho-communist type. A significant portion of the document is dedicated to discussing left-wing politics. He defines leftists as socialist, collectivist, politi politically correct types. He believes that the over-socialization and feelings of inferiority are primary drivers. And it derides one of the most widespread men oh, okay never mind i guess i guess i'm wrong he's maybe he's like an and cap oh no he also says that conservatives are dipshits as well so uh, the guy's nuts but like i guess he's he's a smart guy the unabomber and sticks hex and hammer tim, tim pool's biggest biggest boys his his favoritest guys He's a good dude. He's a good dude. I remember we were on stage at a panel, and he was, he was on the panel digitally. And someone asked about some politician who was like a white nationalist. And then his position on some policy was like X, Y, and Z. And then I said, isn't that like a white nationalist guy? Sticks immediately chimes in and says, I don't care. Just because someone has bad politics doesn't mean an idea they had separate to that is a bad idea. And I said, bravo. You know, you're completely right. That's true. So as for Cassandra Fairbanks' hero worship of the Unabomber, I don't know to the extent of which that, that goes. If you're saying that a bad guy had ideas, some ideas that were good, then I'm just like, well, welcome to nuance and, 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 and academia. Oh, wow. Okay, so I, I do want to wrap this up by pointing something really silly out, okay? So what Tim Pool is saying here is that we should not judge an individual based on all of their positions necessarily. They have the ability to say things that are intelligent. If you look, I just put out a video. Actually, I don't know if it's out yet. It's scheduled. So I put out a, a, a video that's scheduled to be released soon about Nietzsche. And Nietzsche said a lot of really fucking stupid things. But at the end of the video, I acknowledged some of the smart things the dude said. And those things that are intelligent that he said are not things that should be disregarded. However, most of what he said can be, right? And that's the nuance that Tim Pool is talking about right here. OK, Tim is saying that, you know, despite Hitler being objectively a monster and a terrible human, he did enact 
uh, ridiculous amounts of protections for animals, which is pretty disgusting because that means he thought that Jewish people and Romani people were literally less than dogs. So that's one way to look at it. That's not good. But regardless, animal rights are not a bad idea. And that's what he's saying is that you can see something that an evil, disgusting human has done and look at whether or not it has merits, regardless of whether they're a disgusting, degenerate human, right? But the thesis of his entire fucking stream right now is that Kevin McCarthy is bad because he's bad, and it doesn't matter if anyone has different ideas than him because he's just bad, and that's it. There's no nuance to it, right? He's saying that we should... We shouldn't necessarily vilify everything somebody does. And then he's saying that he's vilifying everything McCarthy does because he's McCarthy. The exact opposite of the thing he just said. He's not talking about, well, McCarthy has some good ideas here or there, you know, or this or that. But overall, I don't think he's right. He's saying, I don't care. It's McCarthy. It's bad. And then later on goes on to say, well, Hitler had some smart things to say. <laughs> like... You can't make this up. You just can't. You know, like this is, I said it earlier, it's beyond satire. Tim Pool probably doesn't even realize that what he said right there is a contradiction. He probably doesn't see that they're opposites. Saying that someone can be uh, a bad person and still have good ideas and saying that someone is fundamentally bad and shouldn't have their ideas expressed, like those don't seem like differing statements to him that's <laughs> that's you know it's shitty i joined to a not bad take from tim pool <laughs> yeah something is wrong dude it's crazy you know I, i've been impressed with him he's had like three or four smart things to say you know in the past six weeks worth of time or whatever it's it's been something i'm i'm impressed with with my boy but yeah so homeboy doesn't understand what's going on that's okay uh we still love him he's he's my favorite pool boy as we said at the beginning of this segment so if i ever have a pool i will hire tim to clean my pool for me he will be my pool boy you know 